don't have Christ in your life, and you don't lead a Christ-like life, then you have your physical death. Yes, we all have to die one day. All right? But the second death is your spiritual death, which you will not be heavenward bound, but towards hell. And so this is important. Now, one who knows Christ is one death and is but two birth. The one death is your physical death, and the two birth is with the day that you were born into this world through your mom's womb. And the second is what we call the born again experience, which you are a citizen of heaven. The day that you acknowledge Christ Jesus as your personal savior, you are a citizen of heaven. And thus it is tells here, for those people of Christ in you, where is death is a sting? Where is your retreat? There's none. The death has never can win us when you are in Christ, my friend. And this is what Paul is trying to mention to us. And that the Christ has already won victory on the cross. It was not a defeat. Jesus dying on the cross was not a defeat to us. It was not in vain. It has got a cause. He has to defeat the devil in order to give us life. And so, my friends, we do have and we have weapons to destroy every strong that comes against us. It can be physical, it can be spiritual. We have three weapons that Lord God has given us that we can able to win them. And the weapon has been given by God. Now, my friend, without fasting and prayer, it is like a soldier going into a battle enemy line without a rifle, without a gun, without a pistol. You are defeated. So the importance of prayer and fasting is something that we need to understand very well in the scripture. And that will give you a spiritual weapon. And that can defeat the stronghold that is coming against you again your physical being or it gains your business your life your family whatever and then against your spiritual life and that is something the lord has given you a weapon that we can come against these forces of darkness that we can able to have victory and what are this and this are spelled out in second corinthians chapter 10 in second corinthians chapter 10 you will see in verses 4 and 5, there are three things that are mentioned to us that have been given to us as a spiritual weapon. What are those? For the weapons of our warfare are not the flesh. Right, the weapons of our warfare is not flesh. That means our body, yeah? Okay. But divinely powerful. For but the divinely powerful. For the destruction of fortresses. For the destruction of fortresses, which means of all darkness and powers of darkness. Go on. We are destroying speculation. We are destroying speculation. And every lofty thing. Every lofty things. Raised up against the knowledge and of God. The knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of and Christ. And the obedience of Christ. Now what is this verse that? What is this Paul is telling us? Firstly, the Lord, we are not against flesh and blood, my friend. We are not against flesh and blood. It is the work of the forces through them. It's through the forces through them, right in the flesh. So we cannot go against flesh and blood, but against the power of darkness. And so the first gift is given is what? A divine power. First is given a div divine power. Friends, what you confess, that's what you get. Now watch out what you say. Now sometimes we condemn ourselves. If you condemn yourself, you are condemned. So we need to be right with the faithful words. When we speak about to our children, what you speak about upon your children, what you say, and that's what will take place. And so our confession is important. What you oratorily speak out is important. If you call your child a devil, the child will be a devil. Okay. Because what you say, what you speak, because the word of God tells us everything that you speak through your mouth, you stand accountable in the book of Matthew before God. And so we need to speak the right word. Some of us, 
We condemn ourselves. We condemn ourselves like nobody's business and you are condemned, my friend. Why do you need to be condemned when Christ already condemned for you? And so we need to have the right perspective of faith. God has given you life. Lead it to the maximum. And he has given victory on the cross. Claim the cross. Very sad on these days. Many people want the cross of that Christ. But nobody wants the Christ of that cross. Everybody love to wear a cross on them. Everybody who have their love crosses on their necklaces, on their chains, whatever. But everybody when you want the cross but not the Christ. Sad. Nobody wants the Christ of the cross. When you have Christ of the cross in your life, then you will see He will abide in you. And you and He will abide in you. And whatever that you ask of, it will be given to you. And so it's important, my friend. The first is, He's given you a divine power. Jesus has said in the book of John, He said, you will do greater things than I am. What Jesus did? He healed the blind. He raised the dead. Lame able to walk. He, he cursed the fig tree. He died. All right. And Lazarus was dead in the graveyard for four days. And the sister says, Lord, if only you have been here four days ago, my brother would be alive. And what the Lord said, you are not. And he went to the graveyard and says, Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth. And the Lord says, you will do greater things than that. We are not. We are powerless. Why? The reason that we are powerless are stated in verse 5 and what? 2 Corinthians in chapter 10. That the knowledge of God, the word of God. The word of God, my friend, is important that we need to have the word of God in our life. The word of God is so important. Let's turn to the book of Jeremiah. against you it's a stronghold and the devil came and tempted Jesus okay let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 4 now in Matthew chapter 4 you will find an important uh, event in the life of Jesus now in chapter 4 it was to receive Jesus had fasted for 40 years and 49 and he became hungry right he was very hungry after an absolute fasting in an absolute fasting, he was hungry, and then at the right opportune time, the devil comes to him. He knows when to eat you. He will know when to you when you are rock bottom. That's the time, my friend. You need to be fully aware, right? The devil will right in your on your footstep. When you are down on your rock's bottom, that's the time he attacks you. He doesn't attack you when your faith is up in the sky. He knows. All right? And so what happens, he knows. Jesus was very hungry. He was pretty hungry after 40 days and 40 nights. As I told you, Jesus went into a supernatural fasting. There is no food, no water for 40 days. And he was hungry. Now look at verse 3. What did the tempter say? And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Look at the right time he comes in there. He knew Jesus was hungry. And he says, listen, you, if you are the son of God, you turn these rocks into bread and eat it up. 
Now, what did Jesus say? Now, this is paramount important. Huh? This is paramount important. What did Jesus say? Look at verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Men shall not live on yes, bread. Look at alone. the word. Look at the word. He answered and says, It is written. Jesus did not use his own fancy words. Jesus did not use his wisdom. He says, It is written. Where is written? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 3. Jesus knew the word of God. And how to hit this stronghold is not by your own strength, not by your cleverness of your mind, it is not by your intelligence, it by the word of God, the knowledge on the word of God. And it says, men shall not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, it is written. Okay, the devil got scared when the word of God is spoken, right? Now let's look at the next one. Look at verse 6. And said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Hmm. Now the devil took him and said, Listen, you throw yourself down here now, okay, because the word of God says, well, Your angel will come and uphold you, okay? You know how terrifying it is? How teasing it is? Right? The devil is putting you in a such a, in a compartment position to act on your own impulse. Watch out! Don't act on your own impulse. In your own emotion. And Jesus hold his mind. And what Jesus said in verse 7? Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written. On the other hand, it is written. Again, Jesus used the word of God. Where does it come from? You shall not put the Lord your God to test. Deuteronomy 6, 18. Jesus knew the word of God. He knew the word of God pretty well. And he was able to hit the devil with the word of God and he free. Right now, let's look at another one. In verse 8 and 9. Again. Okay. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you, if you fall down and worship me. Right. The devil took him to the highest kingdom and said, Listen, I will give you all this to you. Only if you fall down and worship me. that, what Jesus said in verse 10. Then Jesus said to him, Go, Satan. For it is written. Go, Satan, it is written. You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Right. Again, Jesus used the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 13. He used the word of God to overcome every stronghold. So, my friend, the first is the divine power that you have. Secondly, you have the word of God in you, abided in you. Right. And the third one is obedience to Christ. These are the three weapons that you have that you can come against every stronghold when you do your fasting and prayer. The victory is yours. Whatever the situation that you may face. Right now, going back to 2 Corinthians, I will show you something. Back again to chapter 10. In chapter 10, we look in verse 3. We are destroying every speculation, every lofty thing raised against. Now, what does it mean? Every speculation that people tell you, or whatever people have spoken upon you, about your life, you may have gone to see somebody and they say, this is what you are today. And these are the lofty things the scripture tells us. And these are the speculation. Man can say a thousand things, but God is your destiny. Remember that. But if you fall to that man, and you believe that man's word, you are a goner. That's about it. Because you begin to trust in men, not in God. And so friends, the second thing that you need to have the knowledge in the word of God. Men can say hopeless things about you. Men can say you have nothing anymore. But God says you are important to me. You are much more to me. 
and this is the first, the fucking weapon. And the third one is, of course, in the verse 5, you have the obedience of Christ. Obey Christ. Absolutely 100%. It is important, my friend. Obeying Christ 100% is something that you can be able to overcome your strongholds of your life. Friends, during this time, we need to be like soldiers to walk into enemy's line. We must get into the enemy's line and locate the enemy and engage the enemy. I repeat, you need to locate the enemy and engage the enemy. You need to know where is your enemy lies in your life. You need to locate it. You need to engage it. And friends, in this engaging and locating, it involves you these three weapons in you. But if you have fear in you, okay, if you have fear in you, you're defeated. Now let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. What does he say? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. What does he tell us? God has not given us the spirit of timidity. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Okay? But of power and love and discipline. And of power and of good measure, of good discipline. Listen to the word again. It says that God has not given you the spirit of fear. In some of your Bible is timidity. Yeah? It's fear. He has not given you fear. But the power, love and discipline. This is the word of God for you and me in Britain. Alright? Years and years ago by the Holy Spirit. Through the inspiration in Britain. And thus the word of God tells us there's no more fear in God. God has never given you fear. Many years ago in one of the church. We were serving and we were forming the encountering ministry team. Okay? And so as I invited a young man. With the little guy, you know, he leads worships, all right, and he used to come along with me to my ministry, and I said, okay, I think you are right now to come home, Pastor, no la Pastor, I'm very scared. I said, what are you scared about? No, 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 I want to see all the devil la Pastor. <laughs> then I said, you're not fit for this ministry. <laughs> when you have fear, you are a defeated person, let me tell you this. Okay? I remember my pastor was an American in Singapore. He just called me up and said, I want you to come along with me. We are going to go to visit some family. And then these people are Indian. I can't speak Tamil, you can speak Tamil. So he able to talk to them. I said, okay, go on to them. And then I go into the car and when we went to the place, and there you are, I didn't know it was a deliverance ministry. I was put on the spot. But God trained me. God gave me, and I believe it was the training that the Lord gave me so that I could be a minister today. That I can walk into the lion's mouth and get the teeth out of it because I have the authority in the Lord. He has given us all authority, my friends. And so, we have nothing to fear. Look at the book of James. Now, what the book of James tells us in chapter 4, in James chapter 4, look at verse 7. Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yeah, he tells us very clearly, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he what? He will flee from you. Many of us flee from him. He's dead out of here. Scared to go to the kitchen when the kitchen lights are off. About right. Here. Oh, there will be devil there. Friends. We have the devil minute sees you and says this here comes a Christian, I'm gonna run. Alright, I have no place here. I'm serious about it. The devil has no place when you are around. The devil has no place when you're around. And I've seen it in my 40 years of ministry. There is power in the name of Jesus. Whoever is possessed, we tell them to kneel they kneel. We tell them to talk, they talk. We tell them to shut up, they shut up. In the name of Jesus, as power, my friend. We have seen wonders they do. Snakes coming out from the mouth, been living in the stomach for months and years. Right? We have seen charms are being built inside the stomach and comes out in the moment. We have seen it all in the power of Jesus. They will be released, my friend. That was a stronghold. So let's understand this. If you fear, you're defeated. 
If you fear, you are gone. And thus the devil will flee from you when you submit yourself to God. So my friend, we need to locate, we need to engage, and, and able to overcome the powers of darkness over your life. And that can be done through your prayer and fasting. So now you know the oneness and the power of your prayer and your fasting. Okay, it's not just merely you've gone through an exercise of fasting. You have not gone through that. You are just going in a serious time of prayer so that all the darkness can overcome. And every door in our life will be opened up to see the satanic influences and we can able to expose them and dealt with them. What are the doors in our life? Friends, there are three doors in our life. I call it the gate. Alright? We're going to see them. Huh? The gate. Now, there are three gateways how the devil can get into you. There are three gateways. The devil can get right into you. The three are eye gate, ear gate, mind gate. We'll see one by one. Firstly, we see the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 6. The eye gate. How the devil entered, and we see how the devil came into and how tempted them. Chapter 3 of Genesis, look at verse 6. When the woman saw. When the woman saw. Enough. When the woman saw. I gave. Yes. This is how the devil attacks you. When the woman saw. The tree was good for food. That's it. In you. The devil. You should not have seen it. Have you seen the. the now that we don't see it today. You know the three monkeys are not. Close eye. Close ears. Close mouth. <laughs> So that time we need to close our eyes. Am I right? So here the woman told, look at the tree. And the woman looked at the tree. It got into the eyes. So my friend, eye gate. The devil influences. How the devil comes through in your eye contact. And that's the reason when the movie, Alter G's movie was going on, many of the young children got stagnant. Their eyes could not roll. I have ministered a number of children and they cannot, eyes turn to red because they are watching the portages on their TV, alright, and they got eye contact, alright, they get into eye contact and what more, people, young children are into, you know, they, they, they thought it was just a normal thing, the Pokemon, alright, all the Pokemon and so, you know, pencil box the Pokemon, the relocate the Pokemon, okay, and so the Pokemon, the school bags of Pokemon. If, if you were to study the family of Pokemon, do you know the last of Pokemon is Lucimon? The book, Lucifer. Nobody knows about it, alright? You have Digimon, alright, and then goes on and on, and the final of the family is Lucimon. And people got attracted, and people got stunned. I saw that one young Chinese boy became blind. And, now, and it was through this Pokemon. He was obsessed with it. He was asleep with this Pokemon doll. And finally he became blind, my friend. Nice. Of course, thank God he was healed. All right, God has been good. All right, so the first thing is that we see eye gate. What you see. All right, and then you get frightened and then it comes into your eyes. The next one. Is yielded. Okay, let's turn to Luke chapter 22. In Luke 22, right, let's look at verses 3 and 4. And Satan entered into Judas. And Satan entered into Jesus. Judas. Judas was the disciple of Jesus, that was walking Rapa Rapa. Okay, shoulder to shoulder with Jesus, huh? okay? And where Jesus went, he was there. He saw the miracles. He was part and parcel of it. He was the minister of finance forever. Huh? All right, and then he was everywhere Jesus went, he was there. He was with Jesus, and yet we see here Satan entered him. So my friend, you and I are not spared. Okay? Even the devil entered. Let's continue to read. Who was called Iscariot, belonging to the number of the twelve. And he went away and discussed with the chief right. priests. He went away to discuss. 
years. My friend, the devil ain't in through his ears because for him, the 30 pieces of silver is so important to him. All right, 30 pieces of silver is a one year salary for them during those days. It was important to him. He went through his years. He thought and he heard, all right, I will get good money if I only can be able to what? continue to yeah, earn some money by just betraying Christ. All right? Now the third one, the mind gate. Look at the Old Testament of 1 Chronicles. In 1 Chronicles, in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, all right? We see this. Verse 1. Then Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to a number Israel. Friend of God. David was called the friend of God, a man after the heart of God. And now we see that Satan stood up against Israel and moved David in his mind. You know what he said? Listen, David, I want you to go and count all your army, how much of brilliant men you have, how much of warriors you have. And I want you to count them and consess them. And he told Joab, Joab, the commander, go and do it. Despite Joab said, Lord, my Lord, our God has been our defender. Our God has done the battle for us. Why do you need to consider? And this burned before the eyes of God. God was so displeased. Do you know that? God was so displeased with David. You are supposed to be dependent on me and I will show it to you that all the battles you have consulted me and I have won it for you and this time you rely on your own strength. Mind gate. All right? And because of that, he lost 70,000 of men fell. You read that in verse 14. The Lord sent a pestilence on Israel and 70,000 men fell. Mind gate. When you begin to rely on your own, when you begin to rely, even you can be the closest with God, watch out. This is the way the devil could attack through your eye, your ear, your mind, my friend. And thus, you need to be fully aware. We need to be fully aware. So friends, we need to understand this. Right? And one area that I would like to share, during that time of fasting and prayer, this is very prominent. Right at the time that you are fasting and praying, you will be getting angry very fast. Alright? You will be getting angry very fast, and then you will regret later. I always say this when you are angry, never make a decision. When you make a decision, you will regret it for life. Alright? Now, what does the word of God tell us about anger? Because during this time of fasting, we do go through this anger. So we need to have an anger management now. Alright? What the word of God tells about anger? Let's turn to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians chapter 4. And let's read verse 26. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 26. And he says, Be angry and do not sin. Okay? Be angry. You've got the right to get angry for injustice was done towards you. You've got the right to get angry, but the word of God says do not sin. And not only that, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Now what does it mean? What does it mean? Listen, if you keep a glass of water in your, you know, the, in your refrigerator on the, the top fridge, the freezer, all right, tonight, Next morning when you get up, what do you see? It turns out to be a ice block. Am I right? Real ice block. Similarly, my friend. When you get angry, and when the day passes by, your anger will become like a hard stone. Right? And you have already given in to the devil. Look at verse 27. Do not give the devil an opportunity. By anger, many people have felt. By anger, many people have fallen away from their faith. By anger, they have failed. All right, let me give you one classical example of Moses. God told Moses, Hey Moses, I want you to see the burning bush. And he looked at the burning bush, and the, and the bush was not burned at all. And he saw him marvel and they come before me, kneel down. And so the Lord said, You are going to take my people who are suffering in Egypt, 
to the land that flows with milk and honey. He was joyful. And, and you're going to go and lead them through. All right? And so he was so happy. And he led them. But as along the way, he lost his cool. There were times when people were murmuring against him and they saying, listen, you have no water for us in Egypt. You brought us here, there's no water. So he went and told the Lord, Lord, look here. You are the one who told me to lead these people and now they're murmuring against me. They're upset with me. All right, the Lord said, don't, 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 don't worry. Now look at the rock, you go and speak to the rock. So he went and he spoke to the rock and he also what? Struck it. He struck it. The Lord just coming out. I told you to speak to the rock, not strike. So you shall not take my people to the land that flows with milk and honey. Anger. Friends, we need to be careful with anger that we deal with. Sometimes anger can come. We get angry within ourselves. There are people who just get angry within yourself and make most stupidest decision in their life. And they will regret for it. So beware. During the time of this nature of your time, friends, you will have difficulties of this nature you need to overcome. Right? What is the anger? What does the anger do? Look at Proverbs chapter 12. Let's turn to the scripture and learn something today, my friend, that during this time of fasting and prayer, and this is quite prevalent. Now, chapter 12, and look at verse 18. There is no one who speaks rashly like the thrust of a sword. Don't speak rashly like the thrust of a sword, right? And then the tongue of the wise bring healing. So the one who speaks angrily, speak all sharp words, okay? Much sharp words, and he can really can thrust like a sword. That's anger. All right, it's like a bullet, a, you know, a gun. Huh? Once you shoot, and the bullet has already gone in too late. The right to watch your anger, how you do, what you deal with your anger, all right? It's important. And also look at chapter 15. In chapter 15 of the same book, and it was 18. A hot-tempered man steers up a strife, but a slow to anger specify contention. Am I right? A hot-tempered man steers up Christ. When you're hot in temper, you've got so many thousand things, lovely things to say. Am I right? And which you will be regretting for later. Mm -hmm. My friend, this is something that you need to understand. Alright, about anger management in the Lord, if you want to be in anger, alright, and you make sure the anger must be right. Secondly, do not sin. And thirdly, do not leave over next day. Alright, do you know in some of our homes today, the children become the office boy? Go and tell father. Go and tell mother. Alright, they become the office boy. Alright, why? The next day you don't talk. They had an argument, alright, and then couple of grass, alright, became hard. Next morning they don't see each other's face, alright, and for three, four days they don't talk. Alright, what happens? You have given the devil an opportunity, your children are watching it, and it will come upon them too. What goes around comes around. So watch my friend, the anger that we all go to. Alright, let's read one more verse. In chapter 18 of, sorry, chapter 16 of Proverbs, look at verse uh, 32. He said that he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit is than, than he who captures the city. Wow, what a beautiful verse. A slow to anger is better than the mightiest fellow. Okay? Better than the mightiest fellow. And the one who rules his spirit is who can capture the city of So if you're composed, and you will be doing very well. So friends, the first thing that you need to know to engage, you have the three weapons. And the second thing that I need to share with you, right? Turning back to Isaiah 58. In Isaiah chapter 58, we are back to verse, uh, now let's look at verse 8. And I want you to see the particular one. Then your light will break out like a dawn. Your recovery will be speedily spring forth. Now what does he say in some of your vision? Your healing will speedily spring forth. Friends, when you are doing your fasting and prayer, God brings healing into your physical realm and into your spiritual realm. I'll tell you what are those. 
All right. Now the scripture is so clear that your light will fall and <clears throat> break out like a dawn and your recovery will be speedily spring forth. Receive it. When you go into your fasting and prayer, it is not a big spot. It isn't. God who knows about you and he will not only bring that matter to pass what you are praying for, but also looks upon you. The very person who is coming before me. God wants to heal you physically. God wants to heal you spiritually. That's it. Many of us don't fail to see. We only look at the length. We only look at the length. I can only can tell you, my friend, in the Bible, there is, you know, Palm Sunday. In the Bible, there is only, uh, uh, you know, Mount Itas Day. I can show you Good Friday. I can show you Easter, but I cannot show you Ash Wednesday. I don't know where is Ash Wednesday in the scripture. If any one of you can find it in your Bible, come and show it to me. I would try to see that Bible. So this is it. We need to understand here. All right, God wants to bring about healing processes into us, physically as well spiritually. Now, what are the spiritual matters? All right, number one, you cannot pray. Yeah, people have got difficulty in praying. Do you know that? Shame, isn't it? You are a Christian. You can't just pray for five minutes. What kind of Christian are we leading? If, you know, a parent would like to have a child talk to the child for at least 5-10 minutes. Or if a child hugs the parents, you know, it's a great thing for them. Likewise, our Heavenly Father wants you to have time with Him. Spend time with Him. How many of us can spend? I'm not asking you to spend 2-3 hours like, in these busy days in our life. Can you spend some quality time with our Heavenly Father? Cry out to Him. You can talk to Him. You can joke to Him. The way that we talk to our heavenly, our earthly fathers and mothers. You can talk to our heavenly father. He's not high up on the spindle, my friend. He's right with us. You can talk to him while you drive, while you walk, while you travel, while you do your work. You can talk to him anytime. He's listening to you. He wants to spend time with you, but we never want to give him time. So we have difficulty in even to pray. So sad, isn't it? We are calling ourselves Christians. We pray for the sake of praying. Sake reading the Bible. Sake, you know, I'm a Christian to say a few prayers in Rangla. Around all the cookie cookie prayers. What about people who cannot read the Bible? They cannot read the word of God. They don't they simply cannot concentrate on the word of God. What about people who cannot hear fast? Sad, isn't it? Some churches don't even encourage fasting when the scriptures throughout the old testaments in the new and the old talks about fasting. This is an important part of our Christian life. Right? Nobody talks about it. Right? And talk about, you know, reading the word of God. And what about, you know, seeking the gift of the Spirit? How many of us are willing to seek the gift of the Spirit, which the Lord wants to give lavishly upon us? But we are resisting. We don't want. We just want to be a Sunday goer. Come to church, hear someone, sing song, we go back. Is that what God wants you? No. He wants you to spend time, my friend. So this is the spiritual process that you go through. You want to overcome all these things. A time that you can have a lovely time with God. Alright, as you, some of you can say, I had a lovely time with my friend. I had a lovely time with my children. I had a lovely time with my spouse. I had a lovely time. You can only say, I had a lovely time, an intimate time with my Father in heaven. I tell you, the Lord will raise you up like a spring, my friend. Okay, that is your spiritual process. The second one is your physical process. Now, what is this physical process? Now, my friend, let me tell you this very plainly, truthfully, and I repeat it to you. Sickness are from the devil. All diseases and sicknesses are from the devil. Okay? Get it. Not from God. God is not a God to give you sickness. He doesn't give you a death sentence over your life. He came to give us life. And how can he give you this? God has given us life. And here we see sickness and diseases are come from the devil. I'll show you from the scripture. Let's all turn to the book of Luke chapter 18.
right, chapter 18, now we're going to read verses 11 to 18. The Pharisee stood and was praying to bring this to himself. God, I thank you that I am not like the other people. I'm sorry, sorry. Chapter 13. Yeah, Chapter 13, not 18. Chapter 13, 11 to 13. And there was a woman who, who for 18 years had a sickness caused by a spirit. Look at it. There was a woman for 18 years had a sickness caused by a spirit. You know what spirit it is? The devil. The fallen angels. He has got thousands of them. Alright, when he fell down from heaven, Lucifer was a worshipper. There are three archangels. Gabriel, Michael, Lucifer. Gabriel is a messenger of God. Alright, he brought the good news to Mary that you will give birth to a child by the Holy Spirit. He's a messenger. Michael, you will read him in the book of Revelation. He's a warrior. He's a fighter. And Lucifer was the one who is the throne of God and he's a worshipper. He worships God. And he's been adorned with all the beauties. He's been adorned with all the stones. He's been adorned with all the jewelries. All right, and that got on his head. All right, and that's where the Lord saw him falling down from heaven like a lightning. Right? And this Lucifer, when he fell down, he took away along with him some fallen angels with him. And so these are the spirit. For 18 years, for this woman, for 18 years she was double bang. Oh no, like that, no. Double bang. 45 degrees. Alright, now you see, sickness are caused by the devil. Sickness are caused by the spirit. And it could not be straightened up at all. And verse 12, you see, when Jesus recalled her and said to her, Woman, you are free from your sickness. Okay? So you see, in the physical realm, all sicknesses, you name it, your diabetes, your blood sugar, your pressure, your migraine, whatever. Whatever is from the devil. So how you overcome it? Your divine power. Your divine power. Friends, let me say this and I'll end this. I'm an acute gastric patient. When I get gastric, I'll faint. I'll vomit and I'll faint. That was in Singapore. Alright? Whenever I have gastric pains, I will warm it up and I'll get knocked up. That's it. I'll pass out. And one day I told my pastor, Pastor, you need to pray for me. You know what he told me? I found it very stupid. He said, go into three days of fasting and prayer. I said, Pastor, here yeah, empty stomach, I'll drop in bed. And you want me to fast and pray? He said, go ahead and do it, son. I fasted. I fasted and prayed for three days. I said, Lord, since my pastor is my authority over me, my spiritual forefather, my spiritual father, and my spiritual authority who tells me to do it, I will do it, Lord. I will believe his word because he is sent by you. And so I started. Friends, today, I don't have cash to get off. Because the three days of fasting, the Lord redeemed me. The Lord healed me. What about you? God can heal you, my friend. Take heart. For the scriptures already say in Isaiah 58, right, your healing will be speedily bring forth. That's the word of God. It's for you. Take it or leave it. Don't go with the double thought of mine. All right? God brings healing into your body. Whatever. I know some of you are suffering from all of my brain, la, you know, knee pain, la, all this kind. Continue to ask the Lord to remove them and he will get into power. Because you have your divine power in you and you have the word of God in you. Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God, not your own words. You are defeated. Speak the word of God as the way the Lord spoke. The Lord spoke and told me, God, Satan, you shall not tempt me at all because it is written. So use the word of God. Speak against every stronghold that comes against you and you will surely see victory coming your way and you will become a conqueror. The Lord will bless you in these days of fasting. All right, and pray that this teaching will help you and you go back home 
with some rich lessons that you can practice in your life. Let us pray.